Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Good. Let's do it. Okay, hello everyone. Um, now we are going to start with another course. Um, you are going to learn, I think, more uh, things about the, the English language. And we are going to remember information that we already have. We are like making a feedback of information. Uh, we are going to acquire a new information. And also we are going to practice our English. Uh, my name is Elena Chavarria and I am going to be the um, person in charge for this course. So we are going to be working uh, together this, um, this month. So I think that it will be very amazing because we are going to learn more of things. And also, if you have a, some a question, if we have some situation in which you need some help, you can ask me um, and I will help you up, um, clarify uh, the uh, question that you have about the dress. Um, we are going to start uh, because we have just one hour to uh, complete all the information that we have about the topic. Uh, that we are going to develop for this new course. So, um, first, I will say something about the way in which um, I like to work um, with uh, the courses. So, uh, I have like a specific uh, document in which I like to write all the information that we are going to use uh, for the course. But I am not working with um, Word, documents in Word, in which you will uh, download some uh, information. I am working with a Google Docs, in which I'm going to write uh, all the information that I have for you. Uh, the exercises, the examples, and all of those things. Um, and I will send to you the link of the document uh, this uh, Friday. Because, you know, uh, the conference has some situation with um, the brain, and we are starting in the course tonight. And for the reason, we are going to have uh, the session on Friday. There is something very special. So the last day of this week, that is Friday, I will send to you the link in which you can access to the whole information for this first week, but also you are going to have the information for the other three weeks. So it is not necessary that you uh, don't learn anything. You can um, enter the link all the times that you want, and you will find the information. I will write the auditives for the, for the session. So you will find the auditives um, uh, through the day. It is not like you're just going to read information um, about the things that you're going to see uh, this night or something like that. You are going to find all the information that you are going to work with me in this course. So that is the way that I like to work with the courses. So we are going to share the screen to see the document that I have for you and how it looks. So we have here the document in the screen. And okay, I think my computer uh, doesn't want to share the screen because I have the same problem uh, with the other group in which I was presenting as the screen, but it is not like a problem of the internet because I am not having problems with my connection. It is, I think, problem with my computer. 
type of it. So this is the document in which you are going to find all the information about the course. Um, you are going to have all the objectives, the information. So it is not like very, very necessary that you are writing all the things that I am going to explain here because you're going to have all the things there. I like to write all the things in the moment because for me it's easier to explain the things and I think it's easier to understand in that way. So we have first, uh, first that I like to share with you uh, every beginning of week. So, so this kind of uh, phrases you're going to find it on Monday. And in this case, it is not Monday, you know. So we have the two most powerful warriors are patience and time. You need to be very, very patient to complete all the things that you want to do in your life. Because in some cases, uh, we are going to find some uh, some higher things that we need to, to leave. So in that case, we need to be very, very patient and also time. We need to control the things that we are doing and have like a schedule in which we can like order all the things that we are going to do with our time. But in that case, it is not like just we are going just to work, 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 work. We need some time for ourselves. That is very important. Well, now we are going to see what is the topic that we are going to develop this night or this first session. And we have the topic that is passive boy. But in this case, it is not just passive boy. In this case, it's passive boy using by. That uh, two uh, letters, by. So we have the objective and it says, in this class, participants will be first introduced to passive boy using by. If you have a text on the platform, you have seen all the topics that we have for the first and second. Um, we can see like the first topics that we have. I like to change something about the uh, topics that we have in the platform because I will talk about passive boys in the first two sessions. Then we are going to talk about a differentiation of the word all and all of the other topics. So in that case, you will find the topic in a different order on the platform, but I will like to work just with passive boy today and tomorrow. And then we are going to continue with the topics that we have in a different order. Así que vamos a trabajar con un orden un poquito diferente al que tenemos en la plataforma, porque en la plataforma comenzamos con passive boy, yes and by, then we have the pronunciation of all and other topics, and then we have a passive boy without by. But I like to have passive boy with by and passive boy without by in the first two sessions. So we are going to write like that. But it's not uh, really that we are going to change any everything uh, about the course. So it's just a those topics because I think it's better to have um, those topics together because it is uh, related to the information. I don't know if Reina uh, is one thing to some, say something because we can hear your voice. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hi, good evening. Good evening. So now we are going to start. What is the first thing that we need to know about uh, this uh, topic? We need to know what are the passive voice. You know that we have passive and active voice. That the first one, the active voice, is the most common voice used in English. Because in that case, is um, in 
with the subject is doing the action. That is, they must uh, use voice in English because it's the way in which we create uh, the sentences. But in this case, the passive voice is a little bit complicated to, um, to use because we need to change some things about the sentence that we are using. But in this case, we are going to see what are the possible, how can we use that, and also what is this passive boy using a by? What is important to know about this kind of uh, information? The first thing we have here, what is the passive boy? And it says, when the object is affected by the action, we use passive boy. A verb is uh, in the passive boy, when it form show that something is done to the person of being denoted by the subject. The passive voice may be used when the door is not known or for when for any reason we don't want to name the door. So in this case, uh, when we are using the active voice, we know that we have a subject that is doing something. So, someone that is our object in that case but when we are using the passive boy that object is affected by the action and the difference in this uh, passive boy is that uh, maybe in some cases we don't uh, want to mention the subject that is not necessary to mention the uh, performer of the action. Para la voz pasiva, decimos que eh, en este caso es el objeto, not the subject. El objeto de nuestra oración es el que se ve afectado por la acción que hizo nuestro sujeto. Pero el sujeto no siempre va a ser mencionado en la voz pasiva. ¿Por qué? Tenemos dos razones. Number one. We don't know who the subject is, or we don't want to talk about the subject of the sentence. No sabemos quién lo hizo, o no queremos hablar de esa persona. So in that case, we are not going to use the subject of the, uh, the sentence. And we have some examples of passive voice. And it says, he was praised by his father. The horse was frightened by the noise. Now, a word was spoken by, by Sarah. The road was lined with people. And the first one, he was praised by his father. El fue, en este caso podemos decir, he aplaudido, he halagado por su padre. El fue. Who? A boy, a man, a doctor, a lawyer, a soccer player. We don't know. We just know that he was praised by who? The father. Yes. Then we have the horse was frightened by the noise. It's the horse. El caballo estaba asustado, estaba congelado del miedo por el sonido. ¿Quién hace el sonido? We don't know. We don't, we don't have any information about the uh, person that is doing or the object that is doing the sound. We just know that the horse uh, was frightened by the noise. Now, a word was spoken by Sarah. Ahora, la, al, algo fue dicho por Sarah. In that case, we know that Sarah is talking. And the last one, the road was lined with people. The road was lined by uh, with people. People in this case is the subject of the um, the sentence. But now we are going to see what are the by in this situation. What we are using by with passive voice. And we are going to begin with a. Uh, um, example and we have like a phrase maybe it is not like um, maybe we have not seen this movie or we don't have any information about this movie but 
we are going to use a phrase of a movie. And it says, in a famous scene in the American film, Claire, that is the name of the, of the movie, Claire, two of the characters have a disagreement. They debate which a Star Wars film is the best. In the movie Claire, we have two people talking about um, which Star Wars film is the best. And they said, I'm sorry, it disappears completely. So I don't know what is happening. Um, so I was saying that they are saying in, in, in this field, Empire has the better ending. I mean, Luke gets his handcuff off, finds out the band Vader is his father, Han gets frozen, and taken away by Boba Phil. It ends on such a down note, I mean, that is what life is, a series of down endings. They are talking about uh, the plot of the history and they are saying what is the best thing about the, the movie. And he's explaining some action that are happening in, in that movie. So we are going to write the sentence because I, I need to explain what is the point of talking about um, that conversation. So I'm going to write the example of the things that they were saying about the movie. That is Empire, that is the name of the, the movie, I guess. Empire has the better ending. Father, here in this in this phrase we need to pay some kind of attention. So then, taken away by Boba. So in this case, the phrase that we are creating with Facebook Boys is the last one, this. Uh, let me see if I have the... Which one? No, I don't have the... But I need to mark this one. So, let me see. Yes, I have this. So, Han gets frozen and taken away by Boba Fett. So that is the passive uh, sentence. Because Han gets frozen, se congeló that person, and y fue llevado por quien? Por Boba. So in that case, Boba is the subject, but the object that is Han is being affected by the action that is Boba doing. So in that uh, uh, phrase, we have a passive voice. So we are going to have some definitions and we have the first definition. Number one is by passive. That is the thing that we are going to learn with this topic. By passive, but also we are going to know what is by phrase? We have two different things. 
about this topic. And the first one, by passive and by phrase. So, it says that a passive sentence usually do not say who the agent is. The agent is often a person, but it could also be a group of people or even an organization. In any event, passive sentence generally do not make it clear who is doing the action. So in this case, it is not like we are just going to talk about a one person. In this case, we can talk about a group of people, an organization that is doing the action. And we have a situation and it says, consider this situation. Imagine, we are going to imagine something. Imagine you leave your bicycle somewhere. You return later to get the bicycle and continue your trip. But you cannot find it. Then someone tells you your bike was stolen. So imagine the situation. You have a bicycle, you live somewhere because you maybe go to buy something, you find your friends or something like that. You go to that place, leave your bicycle in that specific spot, go to do the things that you're going to do and come back. And what happens? Your bicycle is not in that place. Someone tell you, your bike was stolen. This is the phrase. Your bike was stolen. This is a passive sentence because your bike is the object of the sentence that is affected by the action that is stolen. In este caso, your bike, la bicicleta es el objeto de nuestra oración que se ve afectada por la acción que es el verbo. Y el verbo en este caso es robada. Ah, o fue robada. Su bicicleta fue robada. So, but we don't have something in that sentence. That is the subject. Who stole the bike? Who take the bike? We don't know because we don't have information about the person that take or that um, uh, took the bike. So in that case, we don't have information. And it says here, the identity of the person who stole the bike is unknown. However, sometimes it is important to give the identity of the person even when using the passive voice. When this is the case, English speakers often use a by phrase. The word by followed by a noun or noun phrase. We call this by passive. Uh, in English, sometimes it's necessary to add this kind of information even when we don't have uh, the whole information about the situation. So in that case, we are going to use by, that is followed by a noun. So in that case, it's why we are talking about the passive using by, because we are adding information, adding a noun, uh, to give more information about a situation. How will our sentence about the bicycle change if it includes a by phrase? Imagine a police officer, in this case, we have a police officer, shows you a video camera um, images of the person is selling your bicycle. The officer might identify the thief by saying the following. So in that case, we have um, an image of the person that is stolen uh, or has to stole the, the bicycle. And it says, your bicycle, I mean, your bicycle was stolen and we have here by 
And we are going to add a noun phrase. An old woman. So in that case, this one is the noun phrase. And this one is the word by, like this. So we have here the passive sentence, like this. So we have three, three parts in that sentence. So in this case, we're saying that we're going to use the by phrase uh, to identify the uh, person of the subject of the sentence. Let me take this one, I mean. Ah, okay, this one. So, tenemos tres partes en esta oración. Um, tenemos nuestra oración en voz pasiva, que es la que está en color verde. Your bicycle was stolen. Then we add the by phrase. By and the noun phrase. An old woman. Que es la que nos está dando más información acerca del sujeto de nuestra oración, de la que no sabíamos nada, pero que ahora tenemos información. Now you might be asking yourself why English speakers will use the passive voice with a by phrase instead of the active voice. In our example, the officer so have said, an old woman stole your bicycle. We can uh, think that is kind of easy to use uh, the active voice uh, in this case because it's better, it, 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 it makes some, it makes things easier. Because in some cases it's, it's like that, because we have the information and we give that information in a very, very specific way. Because in that case, we're going to say, um, an old woman is called your bicycle and it's easier to understand that that woman takes your bicycle. But, um, it's just that in this case, the by passive I'm so sorry for that. I am having kind of trouble with my computer, but we're going to continue. So I don't know if what is happening. So let's see. I need to. Yeah. So it says that in English, if they prefer to do it like this, because it says that by passive and active voice have a stylistic difference, but the two sentences have the same basic meaning. So in that case, it's like uh, talking about something that we prefer, uh, like the English speakers, um, they know that they can use the active voice, but they prefer to do it like this because it sounds kind of interesting when they do it like this with the by phrases. There are several reasons why English speakers use the by passive instead of the active voice. So we are going to see what are the reasons why they prefer to use the by passive uh, instead of the active voice. Because we can think that they like to make things complicated because well, they prefer to go like this. So we have reason number one. Reason number 
and it says new versus old information. The first reason is that English uh, speakers like to give information in a specific order. English speakers often put all information at the beginning of the sentence, the all information related to people or things that readers or listening are really know about. So in that case, we are saying that they like to put all information at the beginning of the sentence. So in that case, we can say that uh, they prefer to put the old information of the things that we already know about the things that are happening uh, because it's easier to, to understand uh, the actions or um, the order in which the actions are happening. So for that reason, they prefer to put that information that we already know at the beginning of the sentence because we um, we are going to have like a previous knowledge when we are reading or listening that something is happening, and we um, we are going to have like a background information, and then we are going to add a new information about the situation that we are going to find in the continuation or in the last part of the sentence. So it says that English speakers like to put new information at the end of the sentence. These additional details or facts usually are more important than the old information. That is another uh, interesting uh, thing. Um, for example, in the in the in this one that we have about device, we have this information already that something is happening with device, and we have that device was. Stolen. That is the information that we already know. But in that case, when we are talking with the policeman, he said that the bike was stolen by an old woman. That is a new information that is more important than the action that has taken place in the past. Quiero decir en pocas palabras que los eh, hablantes o las personas que hablan inglés prefieren poner la información vieja que ya conocemos al inicio porque ya la sabemos y sabemos que no nos va a dar eh, nada nuevo ya conocemos la situación ya sabemos qué pasó y eso no nos está dando nueva información pero la nueva información que se obtiene la ponen al final porque es la más importante y la que nos puede ayudar a resolver la situación que estamos so we have the uh, second part of the information in which it says that they like to put the new information at the end. Me. So me. Uh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. No, me. Uh, we have a uh, time for questions. Uh, the. Uh, al final de la clase. 
or we can ask uh, now. You can ask whatever you want. If you have the question, you can ask the question right now. Okay, uh, can you go up, please? Okay, tell me where. In the, in the, the sentences. Sentence. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Your bicycle was stolen by an, an old woman. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who is the, the subject? Oh, uh, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, when the object is af affected by the action, you use mm -hmm. by. But um, I don't understand who is the the object is the bicycle. I, yes. I think. Yes, of course. Um, and is affected by the action uh, because it was stolen. Mm hmm. Um, and in the passive voice, uh, um, I have in todos los casos uh, an object and an action who mm -hmm. uh, affect the object. Mm -hmm. and, y la parte que complementa the sentence uh, uh, va unida with by. Okay, I will explain. Perdón, no sé si, ajá, si, ajá, perdón, no sé si, si en, cuando te, usamos la, la voz pasiva, mm -hmm. vamos a tener siempre un objeto que es afectado por una acción y el complemento de esta oración va a ir unida with by. Ok. En... Vamos a, a ponerlo con los ejemplos. Vamos a irlo desglosando con los ejemplos. Vamos a empezar poniendo la oración de esta manera. La vamos a hacer primero activa. The first thing. Y ya vamos a ir viendo parte por parte cómo va a ir quedando. La primera, vamos a poner la segunda oración, que es Your bicycle was stolen by an old woman. Vamos a hacerla activa. Tenemos que nuestro sujeto es ¿quién? La señora, ¿verdad? Podemos ponerlo así. An old woman is stole Oh, I mean was stolen a bicycle or your bicycle because in this case we need to talk about the, the people an old woman was stolen your bicycle or your bike that is the same thing Entonces, esa, uh, I mean, yeah, in this case we're just going to use it like this una señora robó su bicicleta En este caso, la primera, vamos a cambiar de color. This one is the subject. Vamos a ponerla por acá en este color. That is the subject. Es el sujeto, la señora. ¿Qué está haciendo la señora? La acción, robando. Esa es la acción que va a afectar después a nuestro objeto. ¿Y cuál es nuestro objeto? Que en pocas palabras es el complemento de nuestra oración. Es la bicicleta. An old woman stole your bike. Ahora, para cambiarla, ya lo vemos nosotros en la siguiente, que es la número dos, donde el objeto pasa al inicio de la oración. In this case, we are going to change the order. El objeto, que es el final de nuestra oración, va a pasar al inicio. Your bike. ¿Qué pasó con la bicicleta? Fue robada. In this case, we're going to write, uh, write was stolen. Fue robada. ¿Por quién? By. En este caso estamos hablando de que eh, vamos a utilizar el by para agregar más información sobre el sujeto cuando tenemos quién es el sujeto de esta oración. Porque en muchos de los casos, por no decir la mayoría, no se utiliza el sujeto. Lo dejamos, como decimos en español, tácito. ¿Qué es tácito? Que sabemos que existe, pero no lo agregamos como tal en la oración. ¿Hay un sujeto en la oración? Claro que sí, lo hay. Siempre hay un sujeto, pero no es necesario. Entonces, your bike was stolen 
by an old woman. Cualquiera de las dos oraciones está bien. Si solo ponemos la oración donde el objeto se ve afectado por la acción, the bike was stolen, fue robada. En este caso, ¿el que fue robada? La bicicleta. La bicicleta en este caso no fue el que hizo la acción, sino que fue alguien más. Entonces, el que se ve afectado por la acción siempre va a ser el objeto. Podemos hacer otros otras, eh, ejemplos. Vamos a ver otros ejemplos para que nos quede más claro esto de, de los cambios, porque es un poco complicado del, del tener una voz activa a una voz pasiva, porque tenemos que cambiar el orden del de sujeto con el objeto. Por eso es que es un poco complicada. Vamos a ver. Tenemos esta otra. She is going to deliver the letter. She is going to deliver the letter. Tenemos esta oración. Ella va a entregar las que las cartas. Entonces tenemos nuestro sujeto. Que por cierto, aquí no sabemos exactamente quién es she. Sabemos que es una ella. Que puede ser una niña, un adolescente, una mujer, una anciana. But we don't know who is she. No tiene un nombre específico. No es María, no es Juana, no es Rosa. Nothing like that. So, that is the subject. She is going to deliver the whole thing. Todo eso. Is going to deliver this one. We are going to have it like this. It's going to deliver. Y el objeto, ¿qué es lo que va a entregar ella? Las cartas. She's going to deliver the letters. Ahora, vamos a cambiarlas. Vamos a poner nuestro objeto al inicio. Dal. Mm -hmm. uh, the letters was delivered by she. Uh, in this case, we are not going to change if or what. In this case, we are going to... Lo vamos a hacer siempre yes, en, en presente. Ah, okay. The letters... En presente, el verbo be, para plural. Is. Is. Ah, ah, plural. Is the liver. Are. 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 The letters are going. Eso sí lo vamos a mantener igual. The letters are going... To be, in this case, porque no tenemos qué más decir. The letters are going to be delivered, in that case. Van a ser entregadas. Si quisiéramos nosotros decir por quién, vamos a ponerle by she or by eh, Rosita, por ejemplo. ¿Ya? The letters are going to be delivered. Las cartas van a ser entregadas. O van a ser enviadas, o van a ser mandadas, o van a ser... Como tú quieras decirlo. So, in that case, we are going to change, and we are going to follow the structure. Because in the, in the first, we have she is. Porque tenemos una persona en singular. Pero como cambiamos el objeto para el inicio, the letters ya son plurales y cambiamos el verbo to be para plural. The letters are going to be delivered. Van a ser entregadas. En este caso no lo vamos a poner, eh, van a ser entregadas en este preciso momento porque no nos va a quedar bien nuestra oración. And we have another one. That is the last. I'm going to make a cake. In this case, I'm talking about me. Yo, estoy hablando acerca de mi persona. I'm going to make a cake. Voy a hacer un pastel. In this case, I'm going to change a cake. If, in this case, I'm not using am. Um, 
because in that case, you know that am is just for I. In this case, we are talking about a third person singular. Um, okay, is going, I mean, going to be made, si lo vamos a hacer en pasado, made by who? Me. A cage is going to be made by me. Un pastel va a ser hecho por mí. Entonces, el objeto siempre se va a ver afectado por la acción. En este caso, yo voy a hacer un pastel, pero si lo cambio, el pastel va a ser hecho. El pastel va a ser hecho. Entonces, el, la acción siempre va a afectar al objeto. No siempre, como les decía, vamos a poner al sujeto. No es necesario. En este caso, que le pongamos al sujeto, porque ya estamos hablando del de objeto y de cómo va a ser afectado el objeto por la acción. Y ya sabemos que siempre va a ser alguien el que la va a hacer. Pero podemos utilizar el by phrase o el by eh, passive to add more information or new information to the sentence. Because in that case, the object affected by the action is the old information. And the by phrase is the new information, something that we are adding to the sentence. Queramos un poco más claro con esta parte de, las, de los pasivos? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Vamos a continuar con las uh, by phrase y después, uh, mañana, I think, we are going to talk about just the passive, the whole passive um, structure, because in that case, we are going to have more information to keep very, very, very clear about the uses of passive. It's kind of complicated, but at the end, you are going to understand the whole thing about the passive. So don't worry, we are step by step explaining the whole thing about the passive voice. So, I was saying that um, English speakers, let me see, here, we were talking about that they prefer to put new information, right? So we have here English speaker like to put new information. New information at the end of the sentence. So this is the information that we have about the, the uses of the by uh, phrases that they, they, they like to do it. So in our example, the new or surprising, like it's something that we need to, to say, it's kind of hard to understand why. But in that case, the new or surprising information is that it was an all woman who stole the bicycle. You already knew about the disappearance of the bike when you watch the video. So in that case, uh, when the policeman said that they have a video in which uh, you can see the person that is doing the action, you have the information that you don't have the, the bicycle in that place. So in that case, it's the all information. So in other words, the bike disappearance was all information to you because you already know that situation. And the surprise in detail uh, is that the old woman is taking your bicycle. And we have the reason number two. 
It says, the second main reason that English speakers use the very passive is because the agent noun phrase is long. And we are going to see some examples. So it says it's long. And we have the example. The bicycle was stolen by an old woman who was wearing, in this case, we're going to add some information about the woman who was wearing. A uh, clown costume. This kind of, of like um, funny because she was using a clown costume, and it's kind of hard to understand that it's an old woman that is wearing that. But it's just the example. So in that case, we have this one that is the by phrase that we are having uh, to explain uh, this uh, reason number two. Here in the phrase, an old woman who was wearing a clown costume is somewhat long. In that case, we have a long sentence. And uh, the English speakers often choose to use the passive voice instead of the active voice when the agent now phrase is a length. So they prefer to use this kind of um, sentences because they can add more information um, to the by sentence or the by phrase because they can add a lot of things they want to say about the person. If the sentence were in active voice, it might be something like this. An old woman who was wearing a clown costume costume a stole your bicycle. It's kind of the same, but they prefer to do it in the other way. Once again, in this case, the difference between the active voice and passive voice is about a style and emphasize. So we can, uh, we can say that um, there is not like a very, very um, a specific difference uh, between the active and passive voice in this case, because it's more like what people prefer to do. Uh, if you prefer to use active voice, it's perfect because you like to uh, talk in a specific way. But if you prefer to use a passive voice, also it's okay because it's like, the things that we are saying. It's all the style. It's about um, if you feel better in that way. Así que no es como que íbamos a encontrar una diferencia gramatical y que porque eh, la gramática, la fonética, no tiene nada que ver con eso. Tiene que ver con el estilo que tiene el hablante y el énfasis que le quiera hacer a la frase. Así que no es una cuestión en la que la regla dice que yo tengo que hablar usando voz pasiva o voz activa. Es cómo nos sintamos cómodos. Si nos gusta más la voz activa, usamos la voz activa. Si nos gusta más la voz pasiva, usamos más la voz pasiva. And that's okay. There are no uh, really big problem if we don't use a passive boy or an active voice. But it is necessary to... Uh, see this kind of topics, and we are going to develop the sentences, how to construct them, how to create this kind of sentence, what are the parts that we need to put in the sentence to create the passive voice or the active voice.
So what can you do in this case? Uh, so we have this example of the very passive in everyday speech and popular culture. But you should know that the very passive is probably most common in another kind of communication that is the academic writing. Because in that case, when we are talking about a uh, write uh, or to write something, we need to um, use the tools that we have about the language because we need to make it more interesting when we are writing. It says that Susan Conrad and Douglas Survivor, that there are two experts uh, on the English language, they know that the very passive is especially common with some verbs. Those verbs are special because they identify a kind of information, not a human agent. So in that case, it is not like we are going to have just a specific usage for that uh, by phrase. So answering that question that we need to use, like, like something really necessary in the phrase, that is not. Para responder la pregunta que hacían, ¿verdad? De que si era necesario que siempre pusiéramos el by cuando hacemos la voz pasiva. No, no es necesario que lo pongamos todo el tiempo. Es más que todo para darle eh, como un poco de énfasis, para darle un poco de estilo a la, a la oración. Así que cuando hablamos, it's not like very, very necessary. It's more like when we are uh, writing something because we need to give more information, more details, that it sounds kind of different. But in this case, it's just to add something different in the sentence. But you can use it if you feel using it, this kind of by phrase or by passive. But tomorrow we are going to talk about the passive voice. Um, uh, with the whole information that we have about passive voice and also how to construct them because today just see some examples about the passive voice but we need to know how to create this passive sentence so we are going to end the session here because it's time to end the session and we are going to see each other tomorrow if you have a question about the passive voice you will ask tomorrow, and as I said, you can ask when you have the question. It is not like we are going to uh, have a specific time to ask question at the end of the session. You can ask the question, and we are going to um, explain the things that you are asking. So we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number two. Have a really good night. Thank you, Ty. Thank Good you. Night. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night.